Have you ever met someone who recommends something to you by saying, it's gonna change your life? Maybe you've had it this way. You gotta try this new restaurant, it'll change your life. Or maybe you gotta try this new recipe, it's gonna change your life. I unfortunately have had a lot. You gotta try this new diet, Andrew, it'll change your life. You go in expecting some incredible experience, but rarely, if ever, does it live up to the hype. And sadly, I think a lot of people think that way about God's word. We fear that it just won't deliver real change. But the truth is, we can have confidence that God's word is powerful and it can transform us. Why? How can the word of God change me? Well, the letter of Hebrews in the New Testament says this in chapter four. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. I remember when I first started having an interest in learning more about Christianity and about Jesus. And I knew that the Bible was important, but I didn't really know why. And a friend of mine who was helping me grow in my faith at that time, led me to this verse that I think helped open my eyes to why God's word is so important. Firstly, God's word is the means by which we can know God himself. That passage that I read a moment ago starts with this line, for the word of God is living and active. See, the Bible is unlike any other book that you have ever read. It isn't just a collection of old history or poetry or mythology. It's God's very words to us about himself. And because of that, it lives and it breathes. We're told that it's active, meaning that it does work in the lives of those who read it. It changes them. And now that work is not always immediately clear, but like watering a garden, if we are faithful in spending time with it, growth will come. In another letter in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul wrote this. He said, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. See, God has given us his word to supply our every need. It teaches us who he is and what he's like. It reminds us of what he's done and the promises which he's made to us as his people. But without it, we can't know God at all. See, it's easy to build your understanding of God on stereotypes and opinions, but the problem there is that so much of what we hear in the world about God is untrue. But God's word gives us an anchor because it's God speaking to us directly, and so it sorts out fact from fiction. Its very existence is an encouragement that God wants us to see him clearly, to be able to trust him and walk with him. And even Jesus himself, when he was tested and tempted in his life, placed his trust in the word of God. When he said, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. See, God's word isn't just something that we should spend time with. It's something that we need to spend time with. Without it, we don't have any way to verify what's true about God we're left to wonder and wonder if God really does love us, if he really is good. But even more than that, without it, we don't have any way to verify what's true about ourselves. Because God's word is not only the means by which we can know him, it's the means by which we can know ourselves. God's word is the means by which we can know ourselves. That verse I mentioned earlier, Hebrews 4.12, goes on to say that this living and active word is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It almost reminds you of a scalpel being used by a surgeon to cut into a patient. And I think that the point is that dedicated time in God's word will open you up to know yourself better. Because when we know God better, we'll know ourselves better. It doesn't take a lot to realize that there's a lot about ourselves we just don't understand. People spend hundreds of dollars every year with counselors trying to understand themselves better. We take personality tests, we take BuzzFeed quizzes, all to better understand ourselves and why we do the things that we do. 
Why? Because all of us have a hole in our self-understanding. We yearn to discover who we really are. And this is why we need the power of the Word of God. Because only it can help us to sift through the contents of our own heart. The Word of God is like a microscope that can see to the cellular level of who you are, reveal your deepest needs, and offer you counsel, free of charge. When we have questions about our identity or about our purpose, our significance or our value, it's the Word of God that offers us the clearest answers and the greatest hope. In a world in which we spend time endlessly on efforts to fulfill ourselves, it's the Word of God that offers water to the thirsty and food to the hungry. And this is why King David would write endless songs about the beauty of God's Word, singing things like this in Psalm 119, your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. David knew what we need to know. The Word of God is his gift to you to grow and to thrive. And that's what you'll ultimately find in the pages of God's Word. Not a list of regulations or principles to live your life by, but a direct line to the heart of God so that you may know Him and enjoy Him more. And so, God's Word will change your life. So today, I want to consider what we've briefly looked at together and think about just a couple of things. First, what are some barriers in your life to spending more time in God's Word? And second, how can you make more space in your life over the next few months to learn more about God's Word? And to help you, we've added two links to two short videos created by The Bible Project that will support you in discovering more about God's Word and the beauty that we can find there. I hope you've been encouraged with me today. My prayer for you is that you would discover in the pages of God's Word a living Savior who wants to speak to the very center of who you are and bring you life.